everybody happy happy saturday the 15th of april happy spring um be sure and turn your cameras on if you're comfortable so we can see your gorgeous gorgeous selves this morning um we have some fun planned today we're gonna have a great conversation all about crafting and we're going to talk to Liz Wagner who is the creative director of at crafter.com which is an amazing website we're going to learn all about her and we're going to talk about our collaboration with her um because the next time we get together we're gonna make some candles beeswax candles to be specific I'm very excited about that and um, just a little bit of housekeeping. If you have questions, just raise, click the raise your hand button. And Nicole, my brilliant genius uh, partner and co-founder of Modern Prairie and CEO of Modern Prairie will be moderating and she'll let us know what your questions are. And um, in about 15 minutes, you're gonna hear a ding over here. I'm gonna go run and check. I put a, a loaf of sour, made sourdough bread this morning and it's baking. So I have to make sure it's okay. And it might be another five minutes until it comes out of the oven. So I'm going to be back and forth to the bread, but you know, that's how we roll here at Modern Prairie. Life does not stop um, because we're making candles. It just gets more exciting. So um, I'm really excited to see all of you. Again, if you're comfortable, would love to see your faces. If you're not, that's totally cool. And um, I am so excited to welcome Liz Wagner. Liz is, as I said, the creative director at crafter.com and they are all about everything crafty, um, which is something that I've really begun to develop. And so um, today we're gonna talk about a number of things, but primarily we're gonna focus on what's coming up in our workshop on making candles and the kits that we're gonna have that will be available to you to make candles. And um, people have already started submitting questions before this Zoom, which we'll get to later. Just know that we have your questions, whoever sent those in. I have them printed, Nicole has them, Liz has them, and we will address those during the course of this Zoom. So without any further ado on this lovely, up here in the Catskills, kind of gray, rainy spring day, I'm gonna turn it over to Liz Wagner. Welcome, Liz. Thank you so much, Melissa. That was a lovely intro. Um, welcome to everyone. I received the questions from the community and I was just, I was so impressed. You know, this community came up with great questions um, for candle making specifically. And I know that uh, it just shows that you have a heart for making and you're already thinking through the process, which is really exciting. Um, I wish we could smell your bread, Melissa. <laughs> I have beeswax all around me and it smells amazing, um, but I wish, I wish Zoom could communicate that sourdough smell. That sounds uh, delicious. It's kind so, yes, of heavy. Heavy. the smell in my kitchen right now is making me a little bit crazy. <laughs> I can I'm, imagine. I'm, 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 I'm mollifying myself by eating a quesadilla, and it's just not the same as warm sourdough bread with butter. But that will happen later. So it's a very carby day for me. Oh, but you know, just the waiting for it is half of the fun, right? I mean, just exactly. The Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Liz Wagner. I'm here actually at our warehouse. We're in San Diego, California, and uh, this place is a is a really fun if you love to craft. We um, we love the heart of the maker, and we understand the 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 need to create with our hands. Um, I get a little bit woo woo when it comes to uh, the importance of crafting. I think it, there's something divine in it where. You're taking things that don't necessarily have anything to do with each other and you're applying um, your instincts and your skills to create something brand new and beautiful. Um, and that, I think that's really important. That's, it's almost sacred to me. Um, and it, you know, it just hark harkens back to uh, how everything that we love has been created by somebody, right? And so um, this particular craft candle making, um, it's really, it hits so many of the right spots for me. It's First of all, you know, the history of it, it's, it's a technology, you know, that didn't exist um, and people had to invent it, which is really amazing. And I think uh, I remember hearing the first candles ever made were made by the Egyptians. And it's actually similar to the rolled candles, which we'll be teaching uh, next Saturday. Hopefully you all can join us. But, you know, they would take uh, papyrus paper and roll it around um, either a stick or some kind of cloth, and then they would dip it in wax. So it's, it has that rolled nature to it. Um, but there's a ton of ways to make candles. Um, 
a few of my favorites are dipping candles. So I know that, uh, you know, just a shout out to Melissa and kind of this brand that she's created um, and this mission statement of, you know, kind of having one foot in gratitude in the past for what came before, but also living currently and looking to the future. I think it's really, it's a beautiful thing. Um, so when I think about uh, modern prairie and how they used to create candles in the pioneer times, and it was kind of a, you know, it was a little bit stinkier and messier because they would actually use um, fat rendered from, you know, the animals that they were able to consume and they would reserve that fat and they would melt it down is melt it is kind of um, a nice word of saying it. It's kind of a smoky process, but they would take all that fat and create tallow candles or, you know, from uh, venison or uh, cattle. And I've done that. And I, <laughs> I've done it for soap because I love to craft all things. I love making soap. Uh, and I've done it for candles and I'm just really glad we're using beeswax because beeswax <laughs> is such a, a much more elegant and beautiful, um, essentially it's a waste product, right. From, um, from apiary and, and it can be used in such a beautiful way to, um, uh, you know, live in the mood, bring something different. Obviously candles are no longer, um, the functional thing that used to be right we have electricity now and taking that but choosing to have candles in your home is really it, it enhances the mood and it can bring scent and it can it can change the environment of your home and i, I think that's something really beautiful about um how we used to have something that was purely functional and now it's not really necessary anymore uh, but we choose to have it right because it it really elevates our homes and um, in our existence. So I'm, I'm really excited to talk more about candles in general. Um, let's see. The history of candles is fascinating. I had, you know, I, of course, I mean, coming from a television series that was set in the 1800s, we had candles, we had kerosene lamps actually more than we had candles that I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me. And of course I know that candles used to be made from tallow and I know what tallow is, but it never, like it didn't come together in my head. Yeah, uh, that's nasty and smelly. You're right. It seems really not pretty at all. Not, not a pretty. good process. No, and in fact, I took um I took a tour of a a mine here in uh, Julian, California, and it was a gold mine. And they talked about how you know they would have these basically they were day laborers who would come work the mines, and you know they were they were living a pretty hard life and they didn't always have a lunch and they were supposed to bring their own candles and they were tallow candles. And, you know, at a certain point in the day, if they were hungry, they had their two candles and they could choose to eat one as their lunch. You know, it's, it, I mean, candles have been really important, like across all kinds of situations. Um, I'm really glad we don't have to eat candles anymore. We are very blessed. Um, <laughs> we certainly are. <laughs> I did see someone had mentioned that they use bayberry, um, bayberry wax, which actually is, um, it's very traditional and it has actually, its roots are in the, in the United States and Louisiana. They used to, um, the Creole, the Creole culture kind of figured out how to use bayberry wax. And then the French actually took it back to France and it became the candle of the monarchy and the aristocracy. And it was this fancy thing. So, um, yeah, that's really, really neat. I missed your name, but Bayberry it's wax. Moulton. It's Lori Moulton. What is the process for bayberry candle making? You take the, well, bayberries are from the myrtle. Um, it's a myrtle tree. So, and there's lots of varieties of myrtle tree. There's a very rare one in California, but um, it's a very useful plant. You can even crush the leaves and use it as a bug repellent, you know, which is really neat. Um, but you take the berries and you crush, you crush it and you have to render the wax in a similar way but you need so many bayberries to create a little bit of wax that it becomes a very precious wax. Um, and what I love too, I know that people have a tradition of buying pure bayberry candles and you burn them Christmas Eve into Christmas morning. Um, and it's supposed to bring a blessing to the house for the year. And it's just, it's really lovely. I, I would love to work with it more, but it is harder to find. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love I love those kind of wonderful emotional traditions attached to such simple things like as wax and candles. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kathy uh, from Irvine says, "What about using soy in California? Soy candles are very popular." 
Yeah. Soy is beautiful. Um, beeswax is my, my, my favorite, my queen. Um, but soy wax is a beautiful, very soft. It's a very soft wax. So it's wonderful for creating a, um, a container candle. So something, you know, that you want to put scent into and put into a beautiful container. Um, it's a very soft wax, meaning that it's very, very viscous. Uh, yes, it's very thin when you melt it. So it's not great for taper candles because it becomes a big drippy mess. Now you can, you can make dipped candles with soy wax, but you have to introduce, um, typically what's introduced is steric acid and it actually acts as a hardener. And that's used across a lot of um, beauty products. Um, and it will actually, it will stiffen up the candle so that it will hold its taper shape. But soy wax is the best wax for container candles and adding scent. Um, because it melts so quickly and it's so soft, it creates that beautiful melt pool you know, within the container. And that's actually the part where the scent um, is diffusing into the air. So, you know, people ask me sometimes if they can create a scented taper candle. And I say, well, you can, you can introduce fragrance into that. But um, because the wax pool on a taper candle is so small, it's not really going to diffuse that, that scent into the air. So um, beeswax is just has a naturally beautiful warm smell. It's like very sentimental to me. Um, but if you want to use soy wax, definitely uh, explore container candle making, I would say. That seems to make a lot of sense. Um, I love, I actually love what I'm learning right now because I'm, I love, I love candles. I have them all over my house and we sell various and sundry candles on modern prairie. And I've always, always been obsessed with them and, and I travel with them and I have little travel candles I travel with and I have bigger candles and I have candles and rituals. And, but I, and now, you know, I don't, I love them, but I don't know that much about them, but just the few little things you've told us so far are so informative and so logical. Of course, you want a, a larger pool of melted wax to diffuse a scent because it, it, yeah. it just logic dictates. It's still so fascinating to me. Everything we do here is just so interesting. I, <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I love you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I loved what you had mentioned about you bring candles into ritual. You know, um, that is something that it really is. Um, it kind of goes into that, to the divine nature that I was talking about where, you know, something about lighting a candle, it brings warmth and it, it's, it reminds you that something um, is happening special in front of you. I don't know how else to describe it, but you know, you think of you go into any beautiful cathedral or church, um, and often there's lots of candles and they use beeswax uh, in churches specifically because they are almost a smokeless candle. Um, so we had mentioned tallow and like, it's a very smoky candle. Um, beeswax burns really clean and really pure. And it's so funny because I'm sure you've all seen these, but um, people, you know, they've created votives with like the picture, a picture of like a pop icon on them or their favorite Supreme Court justice, you know? And it's like, it's just part of our nature when when something is important to us and we want to you know bring the the essence or spirit of someone we'll light a candle next to the picture of our you know beloved grandmother or we'll um you know we'll light a candle that has fergie on it you know it's just it's funny how people relate um lighting a candle to just bringing significance to a moment um and i think of like uh, uh dio de los muertos you know and they they have these beautiful uh, what do they call them? A friend, a friend does anywhere. A a friend yes. And, uh, they have all of their, their ancestors there and they light candles and it's just, um, it brings people pause, you know, when they see a flame, you know, and I think yeah. it's lovely. Yeah, I'm, uh, candles are used in so many r rituals in so many different ways too. Like you said, I, um, you know, Friday night Sabbath in, uh, Jewish households, there's, it, part you know, the most important part is candle lighting. I mean, it is about candle lighting and sharing that light. And of course, Hanukkah with the, you know, the lighting of the candles on Hanukkah. And then there, there's, I mean, every religion has some connection also to the ritual of candle lighting. Um, and I don't know about lots of you guys, but I have a tendency when my friends are going through something difficult 
I'll light a candle for them. And that's that's just a flame reminds me to say a little prayer. And that's my bread. I'm going to let you talk. I'll be right back. <laughs> yes. And I, um, well, I'm jealous that she gets the bread. I uh, wish we could all share it. Um, but yes, exactly. When I think of like one of the most lovely hostess gifts is giving people um, a candle or I know that when my friends uh, have a housewarming party, giving giving candles to bring light into that house, and uh, you know, it's kind of like bringing the life in um, is bringing the candles in, and that's really lovely. And yeah, I absolutely. I, back when I started making candles, um, it really just it it changes and elevates the mood immediately. And one thing that I'm really strict with with my family is that we all eat together around a table. Um, Cause I think that's just really valuable We're my family is just scattered. We've got sports, we've got, I mean, we've got everything going on, but uh, we make it a point, you know, to gather around table for dinner every night that's possible. And we light candles. Um, and it's really special to have handmade candles. And I hope you all get to experience what it's like lighting your own candles at your own home. It's um, yeah, it brings a lot of quality time uh, when you have those candles lit. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I love it. And I like you the same. I, my four boys, every dinner we had to, you know, sit down at the table and I would light candles when they were under my roof. And then after they all started to move out, we did it every Monday. Oh, nice. We would get together for dinner and I would light candles and we would sit and talk. And it was the, you know, it's such a busy world that it's so wonderful to be able to have that time to connect. Um, let's go through some of these questions that people submitted before, I think, because there's yes. a few. Okay. So question number one was what materials do I need to make candles? Excellent. So it really, it depends on what kind of candles you want to make. Um, I had mentioned, you know, the, the classic, they were called like chan, uh, chandlers, you know, in medieval times and they would dip candles and the tallow candles are dipped. So that requires, um, a melting pot, right. And and, and basically a uh, double boiler system where you put water on your stove, you bring it to a gentle simmer, you set the wax pot in there, put the wax in and uh, you just melt that wax to a certain temperature. It kind of depends on what kind of wax you're using. So with beeswax, you never wanna boil the wax because it will darken the wax. Um, the wax still functions, which is great. Like you could kind of abuse beeswax. It will, it'll darken if you heat it too much, um, but, the wax has to be in a container that's pretty narrow and deep, right? And what's crazy is um, the amount of wax that you need depends on how tall your container is, right? And the depth of the wax pool will, will dictate the length of your final candles. So I hope that makes sense, but you have to have a pretty deep wax pool to make a tall candle. Um, so it's, I mean, that's kind of fun. You, you would get beeswax pellets, um, and those come in all, all kinds of colors, but you melt down the beeswax pellets and then you have a wick that's long, right? It's gonna actually be double the length of the candles that you want with a little, like a, an inch between. And it's just a repeated motion of dipping into the wax over and over. And you know the wax uh, drips down the candles, which creates that taper, but also your wax pool starts to lower. So that's how you get that beautiful slender taper with the um, kind of the broader bottom. Um, and, and then you need a drying rack. Um, so that's dipped, dipped candles. Now I know there's a question about wicks coming up, so I'll save it. Wicks are, tr are tricky and that is a fun topic. Um, so that would be dipped candles, uh, to make rolled candles, you need wax sheets, right? And I know that, uh, Nicole has this kit in front of her as well. Uh, I do too. Oh, good. And yeah, and Melissa has it as well. So here is, let's see. And these are the kits we're going to be working with next week, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I can show you some of the items that are in the kit. Um, here is a, it's called a beeswax sheet, but it's a foundation sheet. This one, I stepped on it. So please ignore that little, that little part there. But um, as you can see, they're kind of long and thin. Um, I think this one is like 17 and a half by eight inches and it has a texture on it. So it has the honeycomb texture. And these are amazing because we think of these, like I was in the crafting world before, you know, I really understood candle making because crafting has been lifelong for me. Um, but these sheets are really special. They're actually, they're foundation sheets where um, 
the beeswax is melted and then it's poured into these really thin sheets and then it's either stamped or rolled to have this honeycomb texture. And it's actually used in beekeeping um, when you have a new hive and you want the bees to start building their comb faster because bees will naturally do that. I'm sure if you've ever seen bees to like try to build a hive on your property, you'll see the little honeycomb start to form. But when, when this, these sheets are put into those hives, um, the bees like recognize it. They're like, yes, I know that shape. And they start to build the wax uh, more quickly and form and start to form the hive uh, on that foundation sheet. So I didn't know that they had, I thought they were just a crafting thing, but this is something that actually uh, in the apiary world, they, they make these to start their hives, which is so beautiful. Um, and for those candles, uh, it's, a, it's a process of cutting them how you want. And we'll go over this next Saturday. I hope you join us, but it's a process of cutting the sheets down into the shape you want. Um, that could be a triangle to create like a spiral candle eventually, or it can be, um, you can create little mini candles and it's just breaking down the sheets and rolling the wick up inside um, to create a candle. And it's, it's very simple, very rewarding. You can burn them immediately. They don't have to cure. Um, you can make a ton of them in an afternoon. Um, you can, you can make candles for the whole year, you know, in an afternoon, which is wonderful. Um, and so those materials are very, very simple. Uh, you can cut them down with scissors. Um, we include a, a nice razor blade for people who are comfortable, but honestly, uh, children can do this. You know, they can cut down the sheets and roll and roll special candles and man, kids really love it. They really love it. Um, for that process, depending where you are too, uh, the sheets can be brittle if your environment is chillier or um, drier. So sometimes you wanna like, I mean, it's not as, it's not as sexy, but you can use a hairdryer to kind of warm them up or you can leave them in a warm windowsill uh, and that just makes them pliable enough to roll them really cleanly. Um, so that's rolled candles. Uh, for something like container candles or molded candles, there's, there's a whole world of amazing silicone molds you can make or you can buy to make shaped candles, um, which is really amazing. You can, I saw one today, it was just popped up on my Instagram feed. It was like a little vintage um, pickup truck that's so, that someone has a mold for and made, you know, made a candle out of it. You can make teddy bear candles. I mean, that world is, is a wide, wide world. Um, and that involves using a wick and pouring into the mold and all that. Uh, and then there's the world of container candles. I could go on forever. Stop me if you want me to stop, but I just, I love it. Um, and you know, those poured candles, you can go buy vintage containers, which I really love to do, um, going and thrifting like a beautiful handmade vessel that's just sitting there and turning into a gorgeous candle. Um, and that includes a melt pot as well, right? For the rolled candles, you don't have to melt any wax. It's just ready to go. Um, but for, for uh, container candles, you are using that, that melting pot again, introducing fragrance if you want. Um, and that includes like a there's like great uh, recipe ratios of fragrance to wax and all that. Um, and that's, that requires a different kind of wick too. It has to have a base, right? Um, I'm seeing all your questions come in. I don't want to miss them. So hope, hopefully that answered that question and then some, that was kind of long-winded. Awesome. Hey Liz, can you yes. talk about just more bees and beeswax and just, um, yeah you know, the, how important bees are and um, even how you source your wax and the kits that you sell, I think is when we were talking about this originally, it was really, it was really interesting for me to learn. Sure. Yeah. So um, touching back on how beeswax is, is a waste product, right? Um, we, we like to keep bees for the honey mostly. And that's like the magic of honey. is like a whole nother a whole nother Zoom call probably, but uh, yeah, so bees have eight little glands on their abdomen and, and they, they, create, they create beeswax naturally with their bodies. Um, and the beautiful thing is that when they're pollinating something, they're going around and they're picking up pollen from different kinds of plants. Um, and so beeswax can vary, right? It can be very, very pale or it can be really, really rich um, in color, just depending on what the bees are pollinating. And you know, if we didn't have bees, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't really have any fruit, 
we wouldn't really have any vegetables. I don't know if you're gardeners out there. I remember going through and pollinating my squash blossoms with like a Q-tip because there were no bees in my, in where I lived at that condo because they were using all kinds of pesticides. Um, and, and that kills a lot of bees. Um, and so I remember saying, I, I had this moment, there's no bees here. I've never seen a bee here and I wanna grow squash. So that meant I had to go down and find the male flowers with a Q-tip, get the pollen, and then like literally pollinate the female flowers. Uh, and I had this moment of like, oh my gosh, what would happen if all the bees were gone? Um, so it's kind of a scary thing. And like, I, you know, I'm not about introducing fear into people's lives or anything, but um, bees are something we should really take care of. Um, and I think it's almost a vocation to keep bees. We have a, a lot of beekeepers here in San Diego who are really passionate and um, they really, they keep, they keep our whole county beautiful because they, they have the bees that go around and they, they help, um, you know, the bees just help to bring that natural food out there. And also um, they just, they love, I don't know, there's something about bees They're, yeah, they have a very special, uh, special role in our ecosystem and we need to take care of them. Um, I was telling Nicole actually, and I know Melissa is allergic to bees. And so <laughs> that can be scary, right? Uh, and I've always wanted to keep bees, but I have a, a neighbor who's, she's deadly allergic. So it would be very irresponsible of me to keep bees. Um, but yeah, as the bees go around and pollinate and the, the glands are excreting this wax, um, and then they go and they use the wax to seal in the honey that they're creating. So they have these, you know, the little uh, hexagonal honeycomb pattern. They, they actually put the honey in there and then they seal it with wax to keep it contained, which is really amazing. So when they go to harvest the honey, they're scraping, they're scraping the, um, scraping the beeswax, rendering the honey, and then they don't really need the wax, you know? So it's a very, uh, I feel good about purchasing beeswax because, um, you know, it, it it helps fund that whole operation and it keeps the bees happy and healthy. Um, so, yeah, I hope that answered that question. I'm sure you all know all about bees, but I could, I could talk a long time. Oh, I will say something funny. So I was making a bunch of candles at my desk and it was a beautiful spring morning and I had all the beeswax out and I had my, my window open and bees started to come not only through my window, but down through my chimney because they could smell the wax. No, don't freak out if you're allergic, but you know, if, if you're allergic, maybe do this with the windows closed, but um, you know, the bees were like visiting the beeswax and it, it made me feel really good because I was using an, an all natural beeswax, which is what we send. And the bees wanted to just come and explore it. They're like, maybe there's something here for us. So um, kind of a neat little, a neat little blessing of the bees. I had to get them out, but it was nice for a minute, you know? <laughs> catching up on your comments you ran out oh, of comments. Melissa I, I think you're muted I'm so I'm so sorry you might want to mute yourself I am muted um what what I was saying was as as allergic as I am to bees I absolutely love them I just think aside from the fact that they're so integral to our survival as are all pollinators um and because they have an important function I just think they're cute little buggers you know they're just they're little stripy chubby um i keep seeing on social media pe people post pictures like there's one picture of a bee sleeping in a flower that just it kills me with pollen all over its little fuzzy bee butt i just uh. think adorable and not for nothing um as nicole knows and many people probably know melissa is greek for honeybee i love it there you go i love it um, I've got, uh, let's see, we don't have anything in the chat, but how about going down this list some more for these questions? How do I add color to my candles? Ah, great question. So you can add, um, there are synthetic dyes, um, that you can buy. Um, we, we offer here, it's pretty awesome. You can buy these, um, they're basically drops. So it's dye drops. They are synthetic. They smell awful. I just have to be honest. Um, but what's neat is that you can have, let's say 
there's a there's a color called um peach pumpkin and you're like what is a peach pumpkin but basically the number of drops that you add to the wax will indicate the depth of the of the shade right so if you added let's say you have a big um melted pool of wax and you add two drops of this uh special dye you'll get a peach colored taper candle if you add seven drops you'll get something closer to pumpkin so What's nice about those is that you can, you know, let's say you want to make a batch of spring candles, spring colored candles, you can make the peach color. And then as the season's changing into fall, you can get into those deeper, richer tones, right? Like uh, I think the green one goes from sage to uh, juniper, you know, it's kind of this range. So you can, you can play um, with how rich you want those tones to be, how deep. And uh, the, so those are really fun to play with. Um, I will say I'm part, I like, I'm really partial to the natural color of beeswax. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, it can range depending on um, what they're pollinating. It can be a really rich, deep, uh, kind of an, almost have an orangey tone to it, or it can be something pale. Um, let me see, I think I've got, yeah. So you can get white beeswax, which I think actually is treated. They do, they do remove color somehow from these ones. Um, and they are just white, but you can get naturally very pale beeswax. And you can also get all kinds of tones. So here, maybe this is better for comparison. Yeah, so this one is kind of a, a beautiful blush color, which I really love this. I know Mother's Day is coming up. Um, and you know, in this kit in particular, we offer the three, these three colors and they look beautiful as a set. Hmm. Um, so you, yeah, you can dye synthetically if you want, um, or you can buy, you can buy sheets that have been dyed uh, for you and pressed into the, into the, the sheets if you wanted to roll colorful candles. Um, but yeah, I like the, I do like those drops. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Let's see. Uh, question. What is the best to use for candle scents, fragrance or essential oils? I never know how much to use. Reba has asked. Oh. That is a really good question. So essential oils, um, and it sounds like you're familiar with essential oils. There's something called a flashpoint, right? Where you heat them up so hot that they actually, something happens chemically to the, to the oil where it drops all of its scent and it can even take on an unpleasant scent. So essential oils are a little trickier because you have to know the flash points of those oils and you have to know, um, how much to add uh, because essential oils are, well, I'll say synthetic oils are a lot stronger. Um, so synthetic fragrance is obviously a chemical, a chemical scent and they are very, very strong. Essential oils, um, they're natural. So they, they have a more gentle scent to them. So then it gets tricky. I want my candle to smell really nice and I wanna use essential oils but when you add oil into wax, it does change the structure of the wax. It can become, um, for lack of a better word, too diluted. And then your candle might not have the integrity you want if it's something dipped, right? Uh, if it's in a container, uh, and this is the best use for scented candles, right, is in a container. Um, you, you, if it's not blended super well, so some oils blend better into wax than others, uh, it, the candle can actually start to separate. Like as you melt the candle, all the oil can go to the top and then it can burn because it's very, um, the oil is, it's melting or it's being consumed by the flame at a different rate. So what can happen is as the oil, as the wax melts, the oil can rise to the top and then burn off. Um, so it's a little trickier to use essential oils. Um, you know, the synthetic fragrances out there uh, are made for candles. So they've troubleshooted a lot of that already for you. Um, and then it's just up to you whether you want to burn something that's synthetic. You know, does the particles do go into the air? I know that really bothers some people. It doesn't bother other people. Um, so it's really up to you. I think a good ratio for container candles when you're using soy, if you're pouring something like an eight ounce candle, uh, that's going to be one ounce of fragrance. So that's basically um, a tablespoon is kind of a safe, if you don't have a scale, you can use a tablespoon of fragrance. So 
Something really interesting just popped up in the chat. Uh, all, everything interesting is popping up in the chat, but this I thought was really interesting. And I remember doing this at summer camp. Jennifer wrote that I remember as a child, I went to day camp and we made dip candles. We had a base wax, but for color, we added crayons. And I was so proud of my final candle. And then someone else said, wax crayons for color. What a great idea. I love it. Isn't what that a community? Great? Yes, that is rad. I hope you try it. I really do. Um, I wonder, you know, because I did that when I was a kid as well. And now, because I'm an overthinker, I'm like, I wonder if Crayola crayons have changed at all. You know, I kind of wonder like, what just the formula? Could, yeah, I wonder if it would still work with what you could buy off the shelves today. I'd be interested to see what the um, the makeup of, of the crayons are now. But yeah, that is we awesome. We should try it. We, we should, should yeah. totally try it. Let's do it. You know Good what? idea, Jennifer. I love it. I might try it this week and report back for the live class. <laughs> yes, <laughs> do. Please do. I will. I love it. I love now, it. Barbara has a, um, another, a different kind of question. And I like this question too. She wants to know, can you put florals into wax to decorate the side uh, of beeswax candles? And if so, how, like, how would you yeah. get flowers in there? Yeah, that is a great question. So did I hear right for, was that for dipped candles? Beeswax, it doesn't say dipped or rolled. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, what came to mind instantly for me was when um, there are glass, clear glass container candles and they, they put, they put floor, basically pressed florals are inside the glass, but outside the candle. Right. And then you can see as you rotate the candle, those beautiful flowers. Absolutely. Um, we, we have a pressed flower uh, workshop here at Crafter, and you could absolutely do that. Um, probably what I would do is taking those press, those pressed florals um, and using a tiny bit of wax. So basically I would, I would probably melt some extra wax and just use a toothpick to dab them to the sides of the candle that you want, or sorry, the flower that you want viewed. And then, uh, you know, just kind of tack them with the wax to the inside of the glass. And then you would pour your candle and I would do it slowly. You know, I would really let the wax rise up slowly so that you're not knocking the flowers off um, of the sides of the, uh, the sides of the glass. I think that could be beautiful. Um, I have seen, I mean, speaking of florals and candles, I have seen some really beautiful painted candles. So think of like, you know, some dip tapers and then you take, um, you take paint and you paint the candles. It doesn't have to be flowers, but you can decorate the outside of dip candles. Um, yeah, really beautifully. I wish I knew what my, kind of paint that was. My super cursory research just now into the Google world has uh, revealed that um, crayons are made of paraffin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then just coloring. So it doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be anything weird because they're made for children. So they have to be non-toxic, obviously. And it is paraffin wax. Yeah. And paraffin, I didn't touch on um, because my heart is in the natural wax world, but paraffin, obviously most candles um, that you can buy from the store, if you buy a set of taper candles, they are typically paraffin. And that's because paraffin is very stable. Um, it, it's basically an inexpensive wax that does exactly what the manufacturer wants. And so they use it often because it creates a very a uh, sturdy and firm candle without having to, um, you know, buy the more expensive waxes. I don't know how else to say it. Uh, but the, yeah, paraffin is, is everywhere. You can find it really easily. Uh, it just depends what kind of candles you want to make. Now I will say you can mix waxes. So that is something that um, a lot of candle makers explore. So I'm sure even if it's paraffin in those, in those crayons, if you melt it down, it will mix into the wax. Um, and now I'm thinking, can you make marbled candles, right? Like yeah. if you melted crayons in, uh, but stirred it just gently and then started dipping, I bet, I bet that would be something really. Well, back really to the cool. crayon thing, there is something that, yeah, there, uh, Lori said she used, she used to use your kids leftover stuff and they'd make rainbow candles out of the different colors, kind of the same as you did at camp. But here's something that I, uh, Shirley Merker joined us late and I hope she's still here. 
Um, she came in just as we were showing the sheets of beeswax. She is a honey beekeeper and is interested in making candles from her own rendered wax. Um, is there, uh, we didn't talk about that yet. So let's talk about that now. Do you know how she would do that? You know, I've looked at it. I, I've never tried it. Um, I did visit a place where they do that and it was a while ago, but, um, you know, they take, they take the comb out and they have to take the honey out because you want both products. Right. Um, and that's a matter of scraping it. And then I believe there's a melting process where you're basically, and this is done with the tallow method too, where you, you are basically heating it and you create these layers, right? So the wax is obviously, it's a lipid, so it's going to float and then it will start to self, it will separate itself kind of like oil and vinegar. And then you can take out and then you let it cool. And then you take out the, uh, basically the big disc of wax from everything that's rendered. Uh, the process is actually the same with tallow. So I know you're asking specifically about um, beeswax and I wish I knew more actually about how to render the beeswax. But with tallow, you know, a lot of people will boil it in water and basically as it melts, it does create this cap. So the tallow rises to the top and the water sinks to the bottom. And you do this multiple times to get any impurities off. You take the cap off, you scrape the bottom and then you do it again. And that is what tallow is a beautiful white. It ends up being beautifully white, but you have to render it multiple times. Um, I bet there's a process like that uh, for the beeswax. Um, but surely I, I am all for it. Go for it. Try it out. Why not? Uh, you can use beeswax for so many things. It's in beauty products. I've made chapstick. Um, I burnish the leather edges of my leather projects with it, it is incredibly useful. Um, so if you figure that out, report back to us because that's so interesting. Here's an interesting question too. What are some creative ways to use leftover candle wax? Oh, so many. I did just mention a couple. So I, I don't know if any of you out there are uh, interested in leather craft, um, but beeswax, when you cut leather, you have the flesh side and the grain side, the grain side is what we think of as the pretty side, you know, and then the flesh side is more of this has the suede texture. And when you cut, when you cut through leather, the edge um, is usually really beautiful on the grain side, but then the back side, the flesh side has like those little fuzzies, right? And they need to be tamed. So you can take old candles. I, I have so many old candles and I typically melt them back down and make new candles, but I do keep a few candle stubs around and you you basically use friction to tame down the edges of your beeswax and it creates a really lovely finished edge. Um, so that's burnishing leather is one thing. Uh, making chapsticks and body butters, you can totally use, if your candles are made from natural raw beeswax, that is a beautiful body, you know, body product, like um, chemical free. Uh, it has that lipid in it, so it's moisturizing. Um, and a lot of chapsticks have a percent of beeswax in them. Oh, uh, let's see. What else can you use beeswax for? Um, I've used beeswax to do batik art. So I'm not sure how many people are in the kind of the art world, uh, side of crafting, but you know, batik art, um, is using wax to create a resist, right? So let's say you have a big piece of fabric, you can melt down wax and you can paint it on, you can drip it on. And then the wax stays on the fabric, you dye the fabric, and then you remove the wax and the fabric is, uh, it's still virgin under there that the wax, uh, the dye didn't touch it. So you can create pattern um, with, with resist um, with wax. So that's just some ideas, but oh. you, um, you'll come up with some. For Megan sure. had Megan McCarthy just shared that she tried melting down an old candle, old candle wax to make a kind of colorful swirl, but all I got was mud, a <laughs> mud brown candle. Yeah, I, I guess a lot of it's going to be trial and error as we move forward. I mean, none of us, I don't think on this Zoom are expert candle makers by any stretch of the imagination. I think that's why we're here today is to learn, but I could definitely I see myself. Yeah, creating some nice mud brown candles if left to my own devices. I mean, I'm like, I'm I'm thinking about going out and buying a box of crayons, but I know what will happen if I melt those suckers down. It's going to be a brown blob. That's the candle you keep for when your power goes out. 
It doesn't have to be out all the time. It'll still work. Right. And you can, it can exactly. still live its life just in uh, emergencies. <laughs> um, how can I make my candles burn longer? That was one of the early questions that came in. Great question. Um, so that's going to have to do with the uh, viscosity of your wax. So going back to beeswax, beeswax has a very high viscosity. Um, and that means, you know, when it's melted, it acts more like maple syrup than water. It's a very thick wax. Um, and I know there's a question about wicks, which I'm excited about, but beeswax burns very slowly. It's the slowest burning wax of, um, of any candle type, uh, soy wax and paraffin, those both burn really quickly. So I know I did mention steric acid and that, that is introduced to a lot of candles to make them burn more slowly. Um, the other thing too, is the density of the candle. So, you know, something like a rolled beeswax candle. So here's one, you know, there's actually, if you think about it, there's air in here, right? Um, it's, if you weighed this candle, it would weigh less than a dipped candle of the same size. Um, and that's because there's this texture here, right? You're not gonna get that perfectly flush on every layer. So there is oxygen in there, um, which means these do burn faster because their fuel, there's just more fuel in there. Oxygen is uh, a fuel for flame. Um, so these do burn a little quicker. If you had something dipped, you know, like this, this one, it's very condensed. There's no oxygen within the candle. So this, this is gonna burn a lot more slowly. Um, so it's, it's wax type and it's also uh, the density and shape of your candle. Um, and what about wicks? I, Lori said, I've only used cotton wicks, but are there any other ones that may last a little longer or do they all sort of burn at the same speed? Yeah, so wicks are, it's a whole world out there of wicks. You can have um, twisted wicks. So I'm sure if you've noticed, if you have a container candle that you love uh, and you burn it and you blow it out, it has these, um, it's called the carbon mushroom. And that just means the carbon is the burned part of the cotton. And it tends to curl out and kind of create this little nub on top of your candle, if you've, if you've ever seen that, right? Um, and you actually want to get rid of that. So uh, wick maintenance is a whole thing. If you want to get really strict with yourself about your candles is trimming your wicks after each use. Um, and that's what a twisted wick does because it's basically just cotton that's wrapped around itself. And as it burns, it naturally unfurls, right? And creates that carbon mushroom. Um, so twisted wicks are not great for beeswax um, because they, they don't have enough fiber in them that is tightly wound together enough to really draw that highly viscous wax up to the flame. Um, uh, the twisted wicks are great for the soy candles and the paraffin candles because they're a lot thinner and they don't need as much uh, suction action to get up to the flame. Um, I hope that's, I hope I described that suction action, maybe, uh, maybe not the best phrase, but it, it gets drawn up like a straw, uh, to the flame. Um, so when you use beeswax candles, uh, you want something that's pretty condensed, um, pretty tight and has a lot of fiber in it. So what we use for beeswax candles, I've got some here, is called square braided. Um, I'm, I really doubt that my camera will pick this up, but this is just raw cotton. Um, and it actually has, do you see the edges on it? I don't know if you can see it, but um, it's a braided, it's a braided wick and it's raw. So that means there's no fuel in it. And when you make candles, um, uh, if you're using a raw wick, it's kind of up to you whether or not you want to do something called priming them, which means submerging them in wax so that the, uh, wick can drink up that wax, which means that the wick already has a fuel source in it. Um, this is something I do when I make dipped candles, um, <clears throat> is just submerge the wick first. Uh, and that way, when you go to light a brand new candle, the wick itself already has a fuel source. If you leave it raw, you're just burning cotton, you know, and, and it doesn't light, uh, doesn't flare up in the same way. You kind of have to wait for the heat to contact the wax and then you see it kind of spurt up. So 
Um, square braided wicks are very dense. They're, they're very firm and they have a lot of fiber in them for that capillary action that you need for a, um, a really viscous wax. <clears throat> Pardon me. There's also different sizes of wick. So here is a, this is a size two. You're not gonna be able to tell the difference on camera, but this is a size two and this is a size one. And when you're making different candles of different diameters, you need to keep in mind that for your flame to, um, to burn really cleanly and at the same rate as the wax is melting, they have to have a partner wick, right? So the size wick and the diameter of the candle have to go together. Um, so that's kind of a recipe um, when you're making candles, you have to figure out what those relationships are. If you have a wick that's too big for your candle, um, it's going to burn a lot faster and it's going to smoke a lot more. And if you have a wick that's too small, um, the wick can't handle the amount of wax coming up. And so the wax will melt, but it will start dripping over the sides of the candle. So that's how you get a really drippy candle is your, your wick is just too small for the diameter of your candle. Um, there are two little interesting, there are two interesting questions here. One is how about wooden wicks? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wooden wicks. Those are the trickiest. Um, and I love them because they make that crackling sound, you know, it sounds like a tiny fireplace. Yeah. And I think that adds so much. Um, yeah, it's a very specific type of wood. Um, and they also need to have a base to them because those are, those are used in container candles. So when you make a container candle, um, usually the wick is primed and then it has a little metal disc at the bottom. And they, they sell special stickers for that where you can stick it on the bottom of your container and it'll stay there. Uh, some people hot glue them. Um, that works sometimes for me and other times the hot glue ends up melting and then your wick starts floating to the top of your candle. Um, but those come primed uh, and the, the wooden wicks are the same way. So you can actually purchase wooden wicks uh, that have that little metal base. And then it's just a matter of gluing them or sticking them to the bottom of the container right in the center, you know, and then pouring your wax around them. Um, there's a whole ratio of that as well. Like uh, the, the wood has to be super dry, right? It has to be, I think they actually dry them in kilns because if you have any water introduced into your candle, it's gonna create a big mess. So the wicks are kiln dried and um, it's a specific type of wood, which I can't remember the name of it right now. It might be basswood. Um, but please research it. That sounds really, really, really fun. Um, Joan Cavino has something interesting. She said that she knows some people are allergic to soy and they can't really enjoy a soy candle. And acknowledging that none of us are medical professionals here, are, <laughs> are there any um, health concerns in using beeswax with bee, pee, bee allergy people or anything like that that we know of? No, so beeswax is, it's pretty inert. Um, it's not going to, it's actually considered the healthiest wax to burn in your home. Um, it doesn't emit particles in the same way that a paraffin will, or even uh, soy, soy wax emits more particles uh, than beeswax. And whether or not those, um, you know, are disadvantageous to your health, it's kind of just up for you to decide. Um, beeswax is the cleanest burning of all the waxes. Um, so I've never heard of anyone with a problem with beeswax. I will, I mentioned a story about how I had some bees come into my house because I had pounds and pounds of beeswax out and they were curious. So that would be my only caution is like, maybe you do it with the windows closed. Uh, so you're not inviting any, any critters in um, that you don't want there. Uh, our Lori Moulton chimed in and saying um she's allergic to bee and wasp stings it's the venom though but not honey or beeswax and she is a registered nurse of 31 years so she is the medical <laughs> advisor that we needed on this call and i can say that i have i'm obsessed with honey i have honey in everything humanly possible and i even have served um crostini with blue cheese and a little chunk of beeswax and a raspberry before so and I've eaten that and I it, I'm fine with it and it's it's the venom not not the wax or the honey for me too. Sounds hey I will mention one other thing too because just because I'm a a freak for beeswax but 
the cool thing about the flame of a beeswax candle is that if it's a lot warmer, um, just the way the wax burns, it actually emits the full range of UV light. So I kind of think of it like uh, burning a beeswax candle is more like sunlight and burning something um, that's paraffin is more like having a fluorescent light on. You know, it's just there's a warmth to the beeswax candle flame because it emits that full spectrum of UV light. Um, that just, it really creates a warm atmosphere. I just wanted to share that because I get so jazzed about it. We are coming up at, towards the end of our time. It's gone by so fast. We've been talking for an almost an hour now. Um, if there are any burning questions anybody has, now is the time. And um, obviously, Liz, if there's anything you can think of that we haven't covered, now is the time. Sure. I mean, I, I yeah, if anyone's got questions, I'd love, I'd love to hear them. Um, I would just encourage you all to try this. Um, rolling beeswax candles is the best place to start for candle making. Uh, they're amazing for gifting. Um, I give a lot of them away, but I keep a lot because we use a lot of them in our house and they're just a lovely thing to have around the home. It's a very simple, very approachable craft and incredibly rewarding. So I hope you can join us next week. Oh, I love that. I like approachable and I like rewarding. These are my two of my favorite things in the whole world. And it just thundered here. So it's beginning. Where are these kits that we talked about in the beginning? I'd love to buy one. Nicole? Liz? Sure. Um, so if you go to our events page, the event is actually scheduled on the 29th of April. So it's two Saturdays from today. It's at nine noon, same time that we've had now. Um, the kits are available. If you go into, it's, it's called Unrolling Your Passion, I think. And it's about um, the beeswax candles that Liz is talking about. There's a link in that um, event description that will link you right to Crafter's website where you can purchase the kits directly. Um, I would encourage you to do this early, sooner rather than later. Obviously, um, Crafter will be able to send them to you in advance of the of the class. But I believe we decided Tuesday, that Tuesday before the, the Saturday class is when we'll cut that off. So we'll probably um, disable the event um, in terms of being able to purchase. Um, and just like any of the other events that we have, they're recorded. So we'll, we'll publish the recording afterwards. But as you register for the class, if you miss the link, that's no problem. We will resend the link in the confirmation email that comes your way. Um, Megan, unfortunately, we can't send them to Canada, although maybe Liz can answer that. Liz, if you guys can, um, go ahead. Yes, we, we do ship to Canada. Um, so Megan, um, let's see, you can email me. Anyone feel free to email me. It's just Liz at crafter.com. And I can get you a more specific answer on that. Um, but we do ship internationally except when we have something flammable like resin. So, okay. That's um, good to know. Free. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we have two minutes left before we go, just because people were curious. <laughs> it's Let's warm. Where's my sourdough bread? Oh, beautiful. It didn't get quite the rise I was hoping for, but I'm still playing. Hey, it's Melissa, only my can you can you can you go back because you weren't pinned for the group? Can you go back oh. and show us? Because you know I always love to see when you bake. It makes me feel so good about my skills. <laughs> Wait a Ooh. second. I'm not knock sure what on it. The knock on it, meaning you're so good. When you knock on it, it's supposed to be okay. Done. Cooking is crafting. Right. Cooking is crafting. She's so good at everything. I, I, I started that out and I've been feeding that sourdough starter for a, a week. Um, I didn't wow. get the rise I wanted, but it sounds good. And I think it's going to taste delightful. And I'm about to go eat a chunk of it right now. The healthiest bread. Thank you, Megan. I think it's a good bread. We'll see. Hey, hey, ladies, one other thing I think that's really important. And Liz, you touched on this. In the session on the 29th, what we're loving is the fact that you can bring kids into the fold. We would love it if you want to forward it on and include grandkids or your own children. Lori, I think seeing the boys would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Melissa and I were just talking about her granddaughters and things. So it would be so fun to have, um, you know, little ones on that call because I think there's something really incredible about the multi-generational element of bringing everyone together to create. And so this is... Um, you know, with candle making and with the beeswax and how wonderful the kits are that crafters already created for us, it's pretty foolproof. And I think it could be really fun to do. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I have five kids of my own and I've made candles with my teens and my six-year-old, the three-year-old, she lost interest, but it was good to be together, you know? And then we were able to gift uh, my mother-in-law a bouquet of candles made by all of her grandkids. So um, oh, wonderful. Really yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. Those are the gifts that mean the most. That's why crafting is just such a joy because you're giving someone something that came not just from your hands, but from your heart and your mind and your whole being and you put your soul into it. And it's so meaningful. So I'm so grateful to have had this time with you. And I'm so excited for our um, workshop two weeks from today. Um, in, in part of my confessional, I have tried to learn how to roll beeswax candles and I did not do very well. So I'm hoping this will be a different experience and I'm excited to learn. And maybe, which is my word this year, um, maybe I'll get a nice couple of candles out of it. We'll see. We will make sure you're going to do great. There are some tricks. So people have failed at this, but there are some tricks of the trade. So Yes. Looking forward to learning them all. And I thank you all so much for being here. Liz, thank you so much for your leadership and your your brilliant creativity and just gorgeous kind of Zen quality that you have that is so soothing and kind of makes me feel like I can do this. I don't know about the rest of you. Yes, anyone can do this. It was a pleasure, Melissa. Thank you for having me. And thanks for everyone. Nicole, as always, Nice to see you in sunny Southern California, where I'm back here in the thundering, raining eastern part of the U.S. So, well, you know, it was not like that earlier this week. You were outside and it was gorgeous, and I was freezing here. So, you know, it just it goes back and forth. And to all of you, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Thank you, Liz. Too. Thank you, Nicole and Melissa. You. We'll see you all soon. Happy spring again, Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.